Hi, I'm Paul Fletcher. I'm one of the senior lecturers at the Northampton uh, School of Podiatry, which is uh, where the students learn how to make people's uh, feet better and, and legs if they get injured. Um, one of the things that I teach is, is anatomy. Um, so what I'd like you to think about um, just before this session, maybe your teacher can pause it for a second while you think about this, is why we learn anatomy. What is the point of learning all the names of the bones and structures in the foot? So, the reason we learn anatomy is for, for lots of reasons. One is for communication, so that we're all calling things the same term. Um, so we talk about movements in very specific ways. Uh, we talk about adduction and abduction and uh, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And when we write things in the notes, we all understand what they mean. So it's really important that we all use the correct terminology. Um, a lot of the terms are Latin and Greek, so they're quite complicated to know. Um, and it also means that we can um, actually um, make a diagnosis. If we know what's actually in an area of the, of the foot, we can maybe decide what's wrong with it. So probably understanding the anatomy and where everything is gives us a really good opportunity to actually know what the problem is. Um, so it's the biggest tool that we have in terms of helping to diagnose a problem. Um, the other reasons we, we learn anatomy as well um, is um, so that we can seem really clever and charge lots of money when we're in private practice. Um, if we call something the big toe, we can only charge so much, but if we call it the hallux, um, we can usually charge lots, lots more money. It also makes us fun at parties because we've got lots of models and things that we can take for Halloween. Um, and it's also useful um, in, in the fact that uh, uh, we we know what all the complicated joints are and when we're, when we're doing mechanics and, uh, and those kind of things. Some of the models that we use are, are sort of plastic models like this. Um, if you can see, this is a, this is a leg. Um, for, for most people in the street, people think the leg is the, what we call the lower limb, but the leg actually starts at the knee. That's the anatomical leg that I've got here. Um, there are lots of bones and it's really quite complicated. Um, lots of joints. You'll be familiar with some of them, like the ankle joint, but some of these smaller joints, maybe like the subtalar joint and the mid tarsal joint, you've probably never heard of. Obviously, the knee joint is an enormous joint. Um, and we can see we've got some models that actually have the muscles and tendons and um, nerves uh, and things like that in there. The knee's the biggest synovial joint in the body. Synovial joints are full of fluid. Um, synovial joints typically are designed so that they have a large range of motion. So the knee, the hip, the ankle. In fact, most of the joints in the lower limb are what we call synovial joints. Um, so the knee is quite an amazing structure and, and an awful lot can go wrong with it. So in terms of knowing the anatomy of the knee and where all the fluid filled sacs or bursa sit around the knee, that can help us. And you can see there's lots of tendons that make the way around the knee and can maybe get uh, injured. Um, the knee's also got large menisci as well, which are like almost like sort of rubber rings, uh, which deepen the knee. Um, if you look at the bones, um, they're, they're quite, quite flat um, on top. You can see there are some spikes in between them. Um, these are where the um, ligaments that hold the knee together inside attach. You've probably heard of the cruciate ligaments. <coughs> they sit in between the knee. Um, and the knee joint um, uh, has often been, this is a real set of bones that we've got here. Um, so these were once walking around somewhere. Um, so some of the models that we have are, are plastic, uh, some of them are actually real. Um, and the knee 
Um, it's amazing it works at all. Somebody once described it to me as being two marbles on a tabletop. Um, uh, and actually, um, the way that we actually, all our weight goes through that and manage to support us is, is, is incredible. Um, and the knee actually sort of locks in position um, during uh, stance so that we can stand up. Uh, and that mechanism is quite complicated really. So these are all things that we're likely to learn in anatomy um, on the podiatry programme. We have some very detailed models as well. This is a model of the foot and we can see that there are different colours. Um, we've actually got yellow nerves. Um, in real life they're not actually uh, this colour, um, they all look sort of brown uh, and I'm kind of lucky that I get to take the students to do dissection at the medical school um, where they actually get a real lower limb and the students will do their own dissection of it and things aren't colour coded like this so the students need to know what they look like in real life really. Um, but what we're going to be looking at is maybe some of the students examining nerve function shortly. Um, in one of my previous talks we looked at the vascular structures um, and how we can uh, assess those because we need to know about blood flow into a foot. There's lots of ligaments as well. The ligaments and tendons um, tend to look white on these models. Um, and you can see there's a whole lot of things going around the ankle that the students will be expected to know. Um, one of the sessions I did with the students a few days ago is we uh, drew from scratch on the board all the things that go around the ankle and this is what the students would be expected to learn. We put all the veins and the tendons uh, all in and around the bones um, and that's the a typical um, kind of exercise that we, we do in class in terms of learning anatomy. So yeah, I've got two of my third year students here who are just testing reflexes. There's quite a lot of physical assessment that's involved in terms of assessing a patient. And this is, uh, last time we had a look, we were doing some vascular assessments. This is quite a simple test, which actually tells us a little bit about nerve conduction. Um, tells us whether the um, nerve leaves the spine and comes out to the legs and goes back uh, safely. It also tells us a little bit about muscle function, that the muscles are working. I don't know if you want to do it again. Um, this is a normal um, uh, knee jerk, um, which is a monosynaptic reflex arc. Uh, maybe you could look, uh, look that up. Um, there are lots of diagrams in, in books and things. Um, but the students need to know that the, the nerves are working adequately really. So this is a basic test that uh, students will, will, will do on patients and they practice quite a lot on themselves so that they know what normal, uh, what normal is like. Once students know the anatomy quite well, we can do things like scanning. This is an imaging system. This is um, uh, an ultrasound scan. Uh, we're using coupling jelly, which actually means that the ultrasound waves can pass into the body without any impedance. Um, and we're actually getting this image coming up on the, um, on the screen here. There's quite a few things that we can see in there. Um, and what we get is we get a cross section. So if you imagine the ultrasound uh, beam is going down and through, it's almost what we're looking at is if we were to cut the ankle open and open it out like that and we can see inside. So I'm going to point out to you some of the things that you can see on the scan here. So we've just turned the lights out so that you can see a little bit better. Uh, hopefully you can see my little cursor here. Um, this is bone. Um, so this white line here that you can see, this is actually bone. Uh, and to be absolutely sure what you're looking at, you need to be um, imagine where you are on the foot as well. So it's something that we do in real time. Um, and I think you'd agree that looking at this image, it probably looks like a map of the moon if you didn't know what, what everything was. So if I point out what everything is, this is the skin right at the top. This is where the probe's actually contacting. And we can see this is the, um, this is the in integument or the um, dermis um, um, and, the, and the skin over the top. This 
area down here, um, this is just the subcutaneous fat um, that sits there. And here we've got this white line that's running across. This is known as the uh, deep fascia. And here it's really thick. It's actually called the retinacula um, from the word retain. It actually holds down all the structures at the back of the ankle. And they're in a nice tight channel in there as well. So all the important stuff is underneath this white line. So all the tendons and um, uh, uh, vessels and, and things like that are sitting under here. Um, so what we can see, I don't know if you want to just move the probe a little bit distal. So we're moving away from the leg into the foot a little bit more. We can see a nice interesting thing just up here. This is a ver superficial vein. This is actually on the outside of the um, retinacula. So this is... Uh, one of the superficial veins. You may be able to see this through the skin um, because it's on the outside of the retinacula. We know it's a vein as you press on it. Um, we're pressing on the probe, it squashes it. And when you release it, because it's low pressure, it, it releases. Underneath the retinacula, we've got the main vessels. Vessels tend to look black like this because they are mainly uh, fluid inside them. It's the air that sends back the, um, uh, the lighter colours, the air in the tissues. Um, so we've got some vessels here. So if you want to move a little bit more distal as well. So just coming down. I'm just going to... Ah, perfect. There we go. Just as I was panicking that we wouldn't find it. These are a mixture of veins and arteries. Um, uh, and I don't know if you can wiggle the probe just this way and that. So... Oh, we just had a perfect picture and I moved it. Can you just hold it there for me? That's lovely. A little bit of pressure off. This white bit here, this is the nerve that you can see here. So we were testing the nerves and seeing them actually function earlier, but we can actually see the nerve here. And if we were going to put some local anaesthetic in, we want to put it in around this nerve bundle here, which is really close to the artery. I'm just going to, um, if you can just press on the, that's lovely. So this is the artery that's uh, left here now. All the, all the veins have been crushed. So if you kept, there's not a massive amount of pressure. Um, what do you think, Rachel? It's not, not a lot of pressure, yeah, is it? No, I can still feel all my foot and everything. So. so that's enough pressure to actually collapse the veins. So if we left this probe pressed on here for another 20 minutes, we'd probably end up with a deep vein thrombosis in this limb. <laughs> So um, we, we won't do that, obviously, because that won't be good. But now the veins have all sprung back to life again. The blood's flowing in there. I'm just going to turn on the colour Doppler, um, which is uh, going to give us a nice colour image now. Um, so what we can see there is we can actually see the blood flowing in the artery. Um, we had a nice picture. We just want to point it in the direction of blood flow a little bit. So if we can, Ooh. sorry, that's me interfering. I've actually got a worse image now than, than we had before. Um, so it's normally really good pulsing. Yeah. So there we are. I don't know if you can hold that and I'll do the on screen movement. So here we can see the blood actually flowing into the, into the foot. Um, there's very little um, sort of blue flow at the moment. That's because uh, the veins aren't working. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to squeeze the foot and augment the venous uh, return. And you can see, see it light up there. It's not the clearest image we've ever had of a, of a vessel, but... Um, um, and the veins are very much under the influence of the pressure of the uh, muscles squeezing against them. Um, we've got quite a lot of other structures. I'm just going to take the colour Doffler off as much as beautiful as it looks. Um, um, just so that we can have a look a little bit at some other structures. We've got a lot of tendons in this, um, in, in this area as well. Um, I'm just going to try and find a nice one. Uh, for you to have a look at. Tendons change as you move the angle of the probe. Um, 
So I don't know if you want to be about there. Yeah, I think we're just running out of jelly. This is what happens when there isn't enough coupling jelly. Um, basically, if you get her between um, the, the foot, and they are funny shapes feet, so uh, you need to get a good contact uh, without any air between. Um, so what I want you to do is move the probe this way and that, so that you're gonna go that way, and then this way, yeah? Okay. Beautiful, so you can just hold it, oh, just hold it there. Yep. Can you just keep it there? Yep. That's brilliant. So these are tendons that you can see here. Let me use the cursor again. So these are tendons um, that are running here. They show a thing called anisotropy, so they get lighter and darker as you wiggle the probe backwards and forwards. So if you wiggle it backwards, see how they've gone dark and now they've gone lighter? Um, and then go back the other way. I know you moved a little, but that's good. So you can see there's actually a little ring of uh, fluid around. This is actually, there you can see perfectly, um, a little ring of fluid. This is actually um, what we call a synovial sheath that allows that tendon to slide backwards and forwards. So we can actually find on the image where there maybe is damage to uh, structures, nerves, um, uh, and, and things like that. So um, that's pretty good. You see the bone was just showing up quite nicely there. Here we can see the retinacular. So it is a useful piece of kit for visualizing the structures where they're deep in the skin and you can't normally see them. So I don't know if you just want to put the lights back on again. So we've looked at some of the things that we could use for, for anatomy. Um, we use it for scanning. We use it to communicate. Um, we use it to know where uh, structures are and help us with diagnosis. Um, and we also use it for um, working out if there's a problem anywhere. Now, the, all the sensation under the bottom, what we call the plantar surface of the foot, is actually provided by the nerve that comes round this side of the ankle. Um, this is called the uh, tibial nerve, and it's actually coming round a bit of a corner round here like this. Um, and it's actually dividing into three branches um, as it comes around this side. So we've got a branch that does the back of the heel, a branch that does the, this outside bit of the foot, and a branch that does all underneath. So this is the area where we naturally want to put a needle in. And just yesterday I was injecting a patient to make the bottom of the foot go numb so that we could cut something out. So. If we didn't know the anatomy and where the nerves ran, uh, we wouldn't be able to figure out where to put the needle. Um, so this is why uh, another good reason why we uh, learn anatomy. So we've talked a little bit about some of the imaging that we can do in real time using the scanner, but we have these boxes that are on the wall here. Um, they may well be in a museum soon because we use a lot of digital imaging. Um, uh, but what do you think we probably use this box for. Maybe you wanna, wanna have a think about that. Well, we actually have these. Uh, these are uh, non-digital images of, uh, of feet. I've actually got it on, on backwards way around. Uh, so these are typical of the kind of images that we may request. Um, uh, and obviously we'll be looking at the bones and uh, this is essentially, uh, this is what's called an x-ray. Um, um, but um, it depends on, it's basically a shadow graph. Um, we pass um, x-rays which will pass through the soft tissue and get reflected by the, by the bone. Um, and depending on how much um, x-ray gets through, you get these images, really. You can see the image of the foot if you look quite closely in the soft tissue. Um, and there's quite a few interesting things to see. This is what we call an, uh, an anterior plantar view um, or an AP view. Um, and this is a lateral oblique view of the foot. Um, we can see different things and we normally need two images so that um, because it's just a shadow, we might miss 
something on one of the images. On this side as well, um, we can, if you can just see here, you may think that these little lines here are fractures at the ends of the bones. Um, but maybe if you want to pause and uh, maybe have a discussion of what you think these might be. In actual fact, these um, little changes, these are what are known as growth plates. So we know that this is a young uh, child um, that's um, been x-rayed because these little bits, these close up on an adult x-ray. Uh, we've looked at these images. We're quite happy that these look relatively normal. Um, um, if anything, there may be just a very slight flattening of the uh, metatarsal head uh, on this one, given an unusual joint space, but, uh, but not an awful lot. But this can be helpful in terms of maybe determining um, if there's something wrong, if somebody's got a pain in the foot. We're very careful about when we do x-rays. We have these lead aprons which are just next to us here. Um, and the lead ap aprons prevent x-rays getting into the body. Um, uh, they are quite dangerous, um, so we only use these pictures in very special circumstances uh, where we want a definite answer uh, to a problem that we might be faced with in clinic.